So the epistle for the Sunday with the Yaki of the Ascension, take them to St. Peter's first letter, the first epistle to Corinthians, uh, first epistle of St. Peter, chapter 4. Dearly beloved, be prudent and watch in prayers. But before all things, have a constant mutual charity among yourselves, for charity covereth a multitude of sins, using hospitality one towards another, without murmuring, as every man hath received grace, ministering the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak, as of the words of God. If any man minister, let him do it, as of the power which God administereth, that in all things God may be honored through Jesus Christ our Lord. And in the Gospel, taken that according to St. John, chapter 15 and 16. At that time, Jesus, Jesus said to his disciples, When the paraclete cometh, whom I will send, <coughs> send you from the Father, in the Spirit of Truth, who proceedeth from the Father, you shall give testimony of me, and you shall give testimony because you are with me from the beginning. These things I have spoken to you that you may not be scandalized. They will put you out of the synagogues. May the hour cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doth a service to God. And those things will they do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you, that when the hour shall come, you may remember that I told you of them. That's are the words of today's Holy Gospel. So today a few considerations. Our Lord Jesus Christ went up into the Feast of the Ascension. And then when he did two things that we find about our Lord. And so one of the facts about our Lord Jesus Christ that is noted by St. Augustine on the day of the resurrection. That our Lord Jesus Christ said to Mary Magdalene, Noli me tangere. You cannot touch me now. The blessed Lord, or the, 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 the St. Mary Magdalene saw our Lord Jesus Christ. She thought that he was a, a gardener. And she didn't realize that he had risen from the dead, but when she realized that it was Christ, that he rose from the dead, she went to embrace his feet. And he put his hands upon her forehead and pushed her away from himself and said, Noli me tangere, you cannot touch me. And here we see one of the contradictions of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because he said to St. Mary Magdalene, you cannot touch me. And while he was saying that, he was putting his hand upon her forehead. And the reason why he said those words is, you cannot, t- right now you believe you're in heaven. Right now you think you're seeing the beatific vision, but that's not yet. You will see a beatific vision later when you die, and so you're not really fully touching me until you embrace Christ completely at the beatific vision. No me tangere, you cannot touch me, for you shall touch me hereafter in the beatific vision. And yet our Lord says the word, you cannot touch me, while he's touching upon the forehead. And when St. Mary Magdalene died, her body corrupted and decayed, except for that spot on her forehead, which remained incorrupt. And they call it the place of the Noli Me Tandre. The place where Christ said, you cannot touch me. And that's the place that he touched and that never decayed. We see also today in the Gospel, on the Ascension Thursday a couple of days ago, our Lord ascended into heaven... And the angel said to the said to the to the apostles, He's coming back. He went up into heaven, he's going to stay there for two thousand years, and then he's going to come back. And so we'll have faith that one day he's going to come back, and meanwhile, persevere in his absence. You persevere in his absence. And until the time that he returns, he is he's going to come back. Then we have a word that's repeated in the in the in the Feast of the Ascension, and it's a very brief. Uh, season of the Ascension, which goes from Ascension Thursday a couple days ago until uh, a Saturday before Pentecost, and it's in, in multiple parts of the Breviary of Mass today. Our Lord says, I will not leave you orphans. These are the words that He spoke to the apostles on Holy Thursday night. He said, I'm going to go away and I'm going to die. You're going to be sorrowful. I'm going to return, and your joy no man shall take from you. But He says, I will not leave you orphans. And this is one of the hallmarks of the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. Of the, whenever Christ is, there's always 
children. Wherever Christ is, there's always a continuation of Christ. And he does not leave orphans. He'll never leave us orphans. I will not leave you orphans. And these words are Archbishop Lefebvre in 1987 said to our priest of the Society of St. Pius X, an old bishop, old archbishop is ready to die. It is only a few years left on this earth. And we must continue the Catholic priesthood. And he said in one of his sermons at that time, I will not leave you orphans. I will not leave you orphans. Because Archbishop Lefebvre, had he not continued the holy priesthood by leaving us bishops, he would now be in a place called hell. He would not have saved his soul. He did preach the faith. He did provide a seminary. He did teach good doctrine, as my pastor Father Hannafin did. And as many priests throughout the world did. But he said, I cannot leave you orphans. He recognized that the truth of the faith cannot die when he dies. It has to continue by being propagated in real human flesh. And I will not leave you orphans is an essence, an essential hallmark of our holy faith. It's an aspect of the apostolicity of the church. It's an aspect of the, of, of, of the apostles of the church. The church spreads itself, and we cannot leave orphans. And one of the great tests is, are there orphans in the Catholic families? Are there orphans in Catholic parishes, in Catholic dioceses, in the Catholic church? Bishop Fulton Sheen said in one of his sermons to the priests, he said in the 1970s, he says, they call you father. They call you father. And yet, where are your children? Where are they? When God, when you go before the judgment seat of the Lord Jesus Christ, He's going to ask a man who got married, where are your children? Did you have them first? And did you leave them orphans second? Two aspects of a child. The child must be born, and the child must increase. And is he going to be left an orphan? First, there must be children. And then secondly, the children cannot be left orphans. And the priest goes before the judge seat of our Lord Jesus Christ, and then God asks him, have you, have you been a father? Where are your baptized converts? Where are the marriages? Where are those that have entered the kingdom of heaven by the ministry of your holy priesthood? Where are your children? They called you father, and I want to see the children. The Archbishop of Boston, Massachusetts, you know, the uh, bishop, uh, oh my goodness, the little bishop there in Boston. He said in his 50th anniversary of priesthood in the 1965 or so, that he was very proud of the fact that in his 50 years of priesthood, he never once baptized an adult convert. He never once brought someone into the Catholic faith who was not already in that faith. And he made it the theme of his sermon of his 50th anniversary of priesthood before the Archbishop of Boston went the way of most Archbishops of Boston through the kingdom of hell. But the fact is that we, we, it is a hallmark of our holy church that we must have children, increase and multiply, and we cannot leave them orphans. Archbishop Lefebvre said to the priests of the size of Pius X, the seminarians of the size of Pius X, and to the faithful, I will not leave you orphans. I'm going to make sure there's a continuation of the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ in the priesthood, in your parishes, in your homes, in the, in, in the places where we have done our work, and it must continue. We cannot leave orphans. Now, all throughout the world in the 20th century, it is an age of orphans, and now the 21st century. The bishops and the priests, they are leaving orphans everywhere. Families are broken apart everywhere. What few children they did have are being left orphans. Because the faith and the truth that is inside the Father must be passed on to the Son. The heart of the Father, the knowledge of the Father, must be passed on to the Son. When an animal is born, when a, dog, when it, when a bird is born, he does not learn from his mommy and daddy how to make nests. Beavers don't learn from their mommy and daddy how to make dams. They just know automatically... They only need to be born. But human beings can have children and leave them orphans. This is a uniquely human thing. 
If a mommy dog dies or a mommy bird dies, a mommy snake dies, it's, it does not leave the child an orphan. The child continues exactly as all animals did before them. They don't really need their mommy and daddy except for the giving of life. But in the Holy Roman Catholic Church and amongst human beings, it is necessary that there be a passing on of the knowledge, a passing on of the faith, a passing on of the spirit, a passing on of the way of way in which we carry Christ. There must be a physical passing on by the father being there with his children, by the mother being there with her children, by passing on the faith of the children. It is one reason why in the modern world, <coughs> the devil and his principal tool to destroy Western civilization and the Catholic Church, take the mother out of the home so that she will leave her children orphans. What few children she does have, she will not be with them. She will not teach them. She will not feed them the faith, the faith that they need. How is it that we know our faith so well? Because when I was a little bitty boy, my mommy took my hands and taught me how to make the sign of the cross. And hence it's in me. And taught me that Jesus made the stars. And it's in me. And taught me how to say the Hail Mary. And it's in me. And the young man that goes to the seminary, he learns from the priest. He learns from the rector and from the other priests in the seminary and the priests that he meets how to be a priest. He can't simply just go off and get ordained. He can't just simply get someone to go, I'm going to meet you, bang, I ordain you a priest. They must know the faith. They must understand the way the faith is carried by the elder priest. They must not be left orphans. And one of the great sins of the modern church is that throughout the church, the priests have left the faithful orphans. The bishops have left the flock orphans, and the Pope is leaving the souls of the church orphans. He is not giving them the faith to hold them together. He is not handing them over the true faith, the true Mass, the true Spirit of Christ. He is not teaching them how to walk and behave as Christ and carry on the faith as our ancestors did from generation to generation. Our Lord Jesus Christ, before He left this world, He made His apostles other Christs. He made them alter Christus by ordaining them the priesthood and consecrating the bishops. He appeared to them multiple times throughout, the, throughout their life to make sure that they would maintain their priesthood. And many times throughout the church, history of the church, Christ has showed himself time and time again throughout the history of our holy church. And he has not left us orphans. And he has commanded the priests and bishops and the faithful, every level, to make sure that when you go to a place, do not only tend the flock, do not only take care of your children and take care of the minimum requirements, but make sure there's an increase in multiplication of the faith, increase in multiplication of the children, and they are not to be left orphans. I will not leave you orphans. It is, it is part of the apostolicity of our Holy Mother of the Church that we are not to be left orphans, we are not to be left alone, and we are to take on the faith that we have and give it to the next generation. Our Lord Jesus Christ did that with His Apostles. And then he sent the Holy Ghost to comfort her. The Holy Ghost was there to inspire the apostles, to give them strength to the, of the apostles, and to remind the apostles of what it is to be like unto Christ. And then throughout the generations of the last 2,000 years, God has given us saints. He has given us examples in every generation that we will learn how to act and how to behave as Christ acts and behaves. And we have a whole calendar of the saints. The real saints, not the saints that were canonized by, by the last few popes, but the real saints of the church. These saints we should learn about, we should know about. They teach us how to walk and how to act and how to have the Spirit of Christ. They give us the example. So we need human examples so that we are not left orphans. And then the fathers of families and the mothers, they must have children. But after they have those children, they cannot leave them orphans. They have to make sure that the faith is taught to those children. That the child, the father, the little boy sees his daddy on his knees saying the rosary. He sees his daddy leading the family prayer. He sees his mommy doing the duties of mom at the home and caring for those little children and bringing them the, 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 the truth of Christ that is in her blood. And he is bringing the truth of Christ in his blood. That the priest is taking care of his flock and is faithful and pours himself out for the good of his faithful. That the bishop takes care of his flock. That the pope lays down his life for the entirety of the church and considers himself to be the servus servorum dei, the servant of the slave of the slaves of God. And that our Lord Jesus Christ wants there to be not only children that are baptized, children that are taught a catechism, 
but they must not be left orphans. We have to see that the spirit of the Father, the spirit of the faith, is passed on to the children. And that the Holy Ghost will be there to comfort, the Holy Ghost will be there to strengthen, and we have the examples of the saints, and we are obliged to become the saints of our time. Our Lord Jesus Christ said in the Sermon on the Mount, Be ye perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect, and it is an obligation. We have to strive for sanctity and pass on sanctity to our children. And it is necessary that we make sure that they weren't just born and baptized Catholics, but that they, they were taught how to live that faith, how to carry on that faith, how to carry on the customs, how to make the sign of the cross, how to say the rosary, how to have holy pictures in their house, how to, to put the little, little palms in the mirror of the car and have the rosary always in the pocket, how to walk and live and act like a Catholic. And this is passed on. By the example of the father, by the example of the mother, by the example of the priest, by the example of the bishop, and by the example of the Holy Father. And when these examples are taken away, as has been done in the last 50 or 60 years, and more than 100 years in most parts of society, and this then makes a destruction, and makes a destroyed families, and makes a, a, first of all, there'll be no children, there'll be an aborted out of existence, but the ones that do come into existence do not learn how to be as their fathers. How to be Catholic? How to be a continuing, continuing our holy faith? So, in any case, let's pray that uh, that uh, we continue our duty is not only to have this faith, but to carry it on to our children. They learn how to dress like a Catholic, how to kneel like a Catholic, how to speak like a Catholic. Like G.K. Chesterton says, you can tell a Catholic by the way he climbs a tree. There's a Catholic way of rolling out of bed. There's a Catholic way of climbing a tree. There's a Catholic way of doing all things, and we must pass on that way so that they will carry on the spirit of our holy faith and the spirit of the church from one generation to the next. And every, every generation is a wicked generation. Every generation is against God. Some generations are more wicked than others, but every generation is against God. And, there, and that in order to preserve the holy faith, it must be passed on generation to generation by the example of the fathers, the example of the mothers, the example of the priests, the bishops, and the pope. And, there, and the Blessed Mother has asked for the, 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 the Pope to consecrate Russia back out of Mary, which he finally did. And now we're waiting for the conversion to come. And in the meantime, we must hold on the faith and the spirit of faith of our ancestors and then pass it on and pass it on and pass it on. And that, that, so we will not leave this faith and this, the, the, that has been given to us orphaned, not leave it abandoned and alone, but make sure that it continues to spread through our generation unto the next. We'll close it down. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.